Oh, golly gosh, what a great day it is. Hey guys, in response to the video that I posted last week about doing art and making accidents as a form of well-being uh, and feeling good and relaxation and all that stuff that I decided to post a second video uh, this week using slightly different materials that might be a little bit easier than finding a Brian Geisen inspired roller. Um, so uh, the other thing that I was told was that the process videos were very relaxing to watch. Oh, I, I think it's cool um, that people can do art and feel awesome. Anyway, here's this uh, second video of It's Not Hard, Anyone Can Do This. Uh, it's just about engaging and losing yourself in the process. I'm just trying to do pretty much the same process. I got a, I, People sent me in a whole bunch of uh, photographs of stuff that they'd done. Accidents are my, um, my go-to method for making art. Uh, in case you didn't see the first video, uh, basically the whole idea is that if you do art, you feel good you know it, it it does some of those those things it, it makes you feel good it, it helps you with your um relaxation your breathing your heart rate everything uh it's a bit like doing exercise without doing exercise or um actually you know i would even argue that it's a different sort of better than exercise well anyone i know who does art feels awesome you know they don't do it because they hate it they do it because it makes them feel good and yeah this this little thing that i'm going to show you today is uh just a, a nice little process that you guys can lose yourselves in for a couple of hours i reckon it took me two dire straits albums to do so a couple of hours really because yeah one of them was a live album so that, that goes a little bit longer the art that really feels good is the art where i just let myself go and let the uh art drive me rather than me drive the art and so that just lets me uh, fall into accident making where marks that I did not intend to make become the dominant sort of um, conversation in the artwork and that's accidents. So it, this, this process is all about just letting the painting do itself. It's not hard, so here we go. I use this, it's, it's kind of a, a heavy paper here. It comes in a, a big old book. I just find that a heavier paper means that you can be you can be a bit meaner to it. You can, your paint can get a bit wetter, and uh, it can it, it deals with that much better. Use whatever you got, but heavy paper is my recommendation. In the last video, we uh, had a modified roller in order to make a sort of a, a grid onto which we could respond. This time, we're using oil pastels, which are really bright, and I love them because they've they've just got that crazy. Uh, messiness about them. So you're just drawing lines. After we've gridded up our page with the oil pastels, we're using some watercolours now, just the cheap ones you find anywhere, and we're filling in some of those spaces, and we're drawing in some more watercoloured lines as well. So uh, you just get yourself a big old brush, and just look at this. Just fill in the space here, nice and easy. It's just colouring in really. And um, just see see the way the uh, the watercolor sort of responds to the oil pastel. The oil pastel kind of rejects it and gives it that sort of uh, blobby look. Well, that's going to turn out to be a really cool accident too. So drawing a few lines with it as well, extra grid with the watercolor, and just going for a walk really. We're using some uh, different colours there to colour in different spaces and drawing different coloured lines as well. So uh, the whole thing is slowly coming together. This is all sort of background stuff. We're going to do a lot of layers here. So just put on some cool tunes and enjoy yourself basically. Just lose yourself in the process.
Now we're going to introduce Black Ink, our old friend. Now we'll give it a bit of a shake, and now we're just going to start to bring a bit of definition back into this uh, grid process that we've been doing. So again, it's just like taking your brush for a walk and finding squares or inventing new squares or shapes or lines and just breaking it up again. So, you know, we started with oil pastels, we went to watercolours, now we're using ink to break those spaces up like this. Then we get some acrylics, and some people were asking me what sort of acrylics I use. I use uh, structured acrylics, which is sort of thick paint, because you can do a lot with it. But it's too thick for this process, so then I have to water it down. So I just use this extender medium here. You could just use water, or you can just use running paint. You can use anything you want. I just put a bit in there like that. And I always use two colours too. That way I can mix it around a little bit and have a little bit of red, or a little bit of blue, or a little bit of both, and have a good, sort of a purple or something like that. So now we've got these uh, these acrylics here, which are a little bit more vibrant than the watercolours. The watercolours are quite soft. Um, we're just going to start drawing in again. So there we are. A little bit of a red there. Just filling in little spaces with a fine brush. Taking our time, just choosing little spots where we want to go and going for walks there. Drawing lines, boxing in. Going over the top of it or beside other lines as well is a cool move. Uh, you just do whatever you want. It's your drawing, so you're just filling in boxes. Uh, if, if you're doing this quite quickly, some of your ink might not be dry yet, which means that when you start hitting it with uh, the watercolours or the acrylics, uh, they might bleed. And you can see there there's a bit of black, like from the ink, because it wasn't dry yet. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's all just part of the accident making process. Remember, the bigger the accident, the better the art. Just like uh, the last video, uh, I got some lighter acrylics at the end, so I'm using um, I use a bit of white here, and just dob it in there, and a bit of yellow as well, and then we have a little bit of that extender just to make the the paint runny, so that I can sort of spread it around the way I want to with my fine brush, and then we've got that light coloured paint there. Let's give it, give it a bit of a squish. And then just drawing over some of the some of those darker areas that we've started to create, just so that there's lots of layers going in and out of each other. So here we have uh, white and yellow bits going over those dark bits. And now you can see that this picture, we've put a bunch of time into it and it's starting to pay off and start to get really complex. Uh, not only is it a groovy process for you to lose yourself in and feel mindful and happy uh, escaping the world while you're doing it, but in the end you're going to have this crazy abstract uh, experience uh, if you decide to hang it up in your space or something which you can just trip out on every time you see it. And now finally, uh, we're using a bit of black ink to pull it all together again. So this is the final little hunk of black ink, tightening these um, colored spaces up, uh, giving you another layer, and just making your abstract picture look as confident and strong as you can. So there it is. We have made a groovy abstract picture.